Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I will be focusing on the beautiful state of California. Now California is one of the most popular states in the US and is home to around 40 million residents. This makes up around an eighth of the US population and is more than the entire population of Canada. Despite this very large population, there are still plenty of places for wildlife. Many of America's iconic predators live here, but nowadays one of them is missing. Despite having a grizzly bear on their state flag, the California grizzly bear hasn't been seen in the state for more than a century and has long been extinct. As the human population increased in California, troubles between bear and man escalated. As a result of this, many bears were hunted for sport and this eventually led to their extinction. Despite this, you can still find black bears in California and surprisingly, you can also find zebras. There's a wild herd of around 120 zebras in California as they were released from a zoo in 1937. Although these zebras are not really a problem today, California is home to some problem invasive species. In this video, I'll be going through just a few of these creatures as I'll be going through five invasive species in California. And for our first species, we'll be heading over to Japan as we have the Japanese white eye. Now this pretty little bird got its name because of the white coloration around its eyes. And although they're called the Japanese white eye, they can also be found in many other countries in Eastern Asia. These birds can be found in a wide range of habitats, such as woodlands and thickets, but they're also known to enjoy more urban areas, such as gardens and city parks. In these areas, this bird is omnivorous, feeding on several different fruit species, as well as flowering plants and insects. On this diet, they reach a modest 11 centimeters long, and this small size means that they're targeted by many different predators. In their Eastern Asian homelands, they have a few competitors. There are plenty of other small birds that fill the same ecological niche, and this means that there's healthy competition for food and resources. Although this bird is very small and unassuming, it is an invasive species over many parts of the world. One of the places it is most famous for being invasive is is Hawaii. This bird was introduced into Hawaii in 1929 and after this its population rapidly expanded. It is now found on every island of Hawaii and outcompetes many native birds. These birds were originally introduced into Hawaii as a means of bug control on agricultural lands. Although they had some effect, they eat much more than bugs and leave little food for the native species. If this wasn't enough damage, they are known to help the spread of invasive plants by dispersing their seeds and it has also become a vector for avian parasites. But now we know the damage they've caused on Hawaii it's time to move back to California. Now these birds are nowhere near as big a problem in California, but there were many confirmed sightings in 2018, with confirmed breeding in San Diego in 2019. Now California is no stranger to invasive birds, as many exotic birds now call California home. As the Japanese white eye is so small and pretty, many people decide to keep them as pets. It's thought that some of these pets may have escaped or they were released into the wild, hence why there are populations in California today. So far the impact of this species has not been properly researched as it's a relatively new discovery. It's thought that they could cause the same problems as they do on Hawaii, but for now we'll just have to wait and see. But for our next species, we'll be making the short trip over to the eastern United States, as we have the spiny softshell turtle. Now this turtle is one of the largest freshwater turtle species in North America, and tends to prefer highly oxygenated rivers, but also inhabits creeks, canals, and large lakes. It tends to prefer waters with soft sand or muddy bottoms, as it uses the banks of these water sources to bathe in the sun. As the name suggests, this turtle turtle has a soft carapace, as this helps them to move more easily in open water or muddy lake bottoms, and this also allows them to move much faster on land than other turtles. In their freshwater homes, they feed on a wide variety of food items, such as crayfish, insects, fish, and even algae. These turtles reach a maximum size of around 60 centimeters across the carapace, with females growing a little larger than males. Although this turtle originates over many of the eastern states, today they can now be found in California. It's thought that these species were introduced into California as escaped pets, and today have small but notable populations. They can have negative effects on the local fish and crayfish populations, and also compete with the native turtles. As this species is faster than many other turtles, and is also found in fast flowing water, they can be quite hard to catch and control, so this turtle could call California home for many years to come. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Eurasia, as we have the mute swan. The name mute derives from it being less vocal than other swan species, and is recognizable by its pronounced knob at the top of its beak. It is normally found in temperate areas of Europe, where it is almost always found in wetland habitats. This is a relatively large bird, with a wingspan of up to 2.4 meters. It's thought to be one of the heaviest flying birds, and often undergoes a large migration. It can often be found 
as far south as Africa, but as this is a very famous invasive bird, it can also be found in many other parts of the world today. This swan was first introduced into North America in the 1800s, and this was so that they could be displayed at zoos and parks. They seem to like their new North American homes, as today they have increased greatly in number, to the extent where they're considered an invasive species. They are known to overgraze wetland habitats, and as they're such a large bird, they demand a lot more food than the native waterfowl. They sometimes overgraze to the extent that a certain vegetation is eliminated from an ecosystem, and their territorial behaviour drives off native waterfowl species. Although they may not seem the most dangerous animal in the world, they are sometimes known to attack people and can be dangerous to small children. There have been a few attempts to control their numbers in the US, but many people were opposed to this decision because as they've been in the US for so long, many people see them as a native species. So although they're not very popular with the native birds, they may call California home for many years to come. But for our next species, we'll be heading to South America as we have the Koipu. Now I have featured the Koipu in one of my other invasive species videos because they are invasive over many parts of the world. In their native range, they're found in subtropical and temperate areas, and as they're a semi-aquatic mammal, they're often found near large water sources and wetlands. Now there can be some confusion when identifying the Koipu. It is a lot smaller than the capybara, but is larger than a muskrat. They have tails unlike the capybara, and tend to have large orange incisors. In their semi-aquatic homes, they generally feed on aquatic plants and roots, and they're known to eat about 25% of their body weight daily. Although these mammals are one of the worst invasive species in the world, it's not really their fault. They were introduced into the US between 1900 and 1930 for the purpose of establishing a fur industry. Most of these koipus were not treated very fairly, and of course some of them escaped and have now become invasive. The first records of them invading California were between the 1940s and 1950s, where they were spotted in the agriculture-rich Central Valley. There have been many eradication attempts over the past few years, as they can cause some major damages. In addition to damaging crops, these rodents can also destroy wetland vegetation and wear down the banks of rivers and lakes by digging burrows. As they're very large, they also outcompete many native species and are known to contaminate swimming areas and drinking supplies. So although it's not their fault, they are a major problem in California. But for our final species, we'll be heading over to Italy as we have the Italian wool lizard. Now this reptile is the most abundant lizard in southern Italy, but can also be found in neighbouring European countries. It can be found in a wide variety of habitats, and thrive in both natural and human modified environments. In fact, one of its common names is the ruined lizard, as it tends to prefer man-made walls and old buildings. In these areas it can be seen basking in the sun, so it can get enough energy to hunt invertebrates and small vertebrates. They are known for being quite fast and skittish, but they are still targeted by snakes, birds and feral cats. Although this may seem like quite an unreal remarkable lizard. They are kept in the pet trade. This is thought to be how they made it to California, and when a man deliberately introduced four females and three males into his yard, they soon became invasive. Although their numbers are still quite small, they can be found over some parts of Southern California. As they do so well in man-made environments, they can easily spread in cities, and in the coming years they may expand their range. This species can compete with native lizards, and is also known to hybridise with them. These invaders are also known to be carriers of diseases that can also easily spread to the native species. So this really is just another reason as to why you shouldn't release your pets into the wild. But that's about it for this video. If you have any suggestions for other videos then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.